NAU Lumberjacks, seven and four last season, been on a phenomenal run, and we are thrilled to be joined in studio right now by the program leader, the head coach, Jerome Sowers, joining us here in studio. And coach, this run you guys have been on through the big sky has just been so much fun over the last few seasons. Uh, what's it been like within the program? It has to be a lot of excitement each and every year to get back out on the field. You know, it really has. And uh, having the the good fortune of being there for 18 years, we have a lot of perspective and to be able to look at the, you know, the last four seasons in particular and, and uh, you know, look at the number of wins, the, the intrinsic value of our program, how much better the student athletes are coming into our program and the kind of product we're putting out on the field and in the classroom and uh, in the community, it, it's been exciting to see. Now, you recruit every player as if envisioning that they can be a star. You don't recruit guys to maybe be a role player. You don't recruit some to be starters. You don't tell kids, you know, I can see you coming in off the bench. It's not like that, especially in recruiting. Could you have ever envisioned, though, Case Cookus coming in year one as a freshman and having the year that he had? That's about as a, a, a great a dream as you might ever think think of, uh, you know, somebody that comes in and just sweeps you off your feet like, like Case did. And he really did. He came in with, with very little experience, very little, you know, to show in regards to tape. And, and, uh, but he came in and here I am. And, and he showed up and all he's done is he's worked hard, kept a real humble attitude about the game and what a student of the game that he is. And to come out last year the way that he did and, and put up 37 touchdowns over five picks is just unheard of. And so, you know, uh, we're excited about see what is, what's he going to do next, you know, and that's what's coming up this fall. You see a guy like Case, not only is off to a great start within the program, but he could really be setting himself up in the future. Well, I, I do, and, and I think, you know, very special uh, prospects like Case have that deep down inside. You know, they know they're, they're destined for greatness, and yet that doesn't overwhelm them. You know, they, they work hard, they keep a humble attitude, and, and Case has been a great model, a great leader for the, the players in our program to say, this is how you do it. And so, you know, excited about the things that he's, you know, putting in just by himself, but what a great model he is for the other players in the program, you know, about how important it is to be unselfish, how important it is to, you know, see the bigger picture and putting team first. And, you know, Case Cook is that kind of guy. Coach, I'm born and raised here in, in Arizona, and there's nothing more rewarding as a native seeing natives really do well and exceed uh, at the, the college ranks and then on to the pro ranks. And when we, I look at your receiving course specifically, you look at what Emmanuel Butler did last season. You look at Elijah Marks over at Desert Edge, who is uh, really coming into his own. And even a guy like Dan Galindo coming from Pinnacle that you expect to make a big impact. These are all homegrown guys at your deepest position, arguably. It's, it's, it's fun from an outsider's point of view to see what you've been able to accomplish. You know, it has, because we, we lost key guys. Dijon Walker from Basha High School was a five-year producing guy and tremendous senior year last year. And we lost Alex Holmes you know, out of Chaparral, and even R.J. Rickert, who was a tight end receiver. There's a lot of guys that have been very productive in our program, but, but to see Emmanuel Butler, you know, prepared to emerge, and Elijah, and, and Dan Galindo, and, and of course we get off of a redshirt is Patrick Baldenegro from, from uh, uh, Chandler High School, uh, a notable tight end receiver type. So, you know, more guys coming in and, and stepping in to replace the production that we lost, and, and to be excited about the fact that we, you know, we can continue this movement, this, this, uh, this trajectory forward. And so I'm, I'm thrilled. I know our coaching staff is looking forward to it. Coach, I mean, you mentioned 18 years as a head coach of this program. Is there a point that you can kind of pinpoint when recruiting in Arizona really kind of started to take off the way it has? Maybe not necessarily with a player, but just when you started noticing that the overall depth coming from the Valley and the state overall was really on the up. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's really difficult to put it to a year, but there's definitely been a trend. Uh, you know, we like the model of having at least half your team from the state of Arizona. It helps in so many other ways with alumni relations, with, you know, uh, the team having an identity and, and, a, and a commonness about them. So, you know, our, our uh, commitment to have 50% of our team from the state of Arizona has helped our team chemistry. And the guys come into the locker room and everybody has a sense of who they are. And maybe you don't know them directly, but you know of them. And so there's, there's respect coming in already. And so it's been uh, really in the last seven or eight years, though, the number of prospects that have been available to us in the state and, uh, uh, and being able to, to fill our roster the way that we have is very exciting. Because that's been kind of the, the program model we wanted. 
at least half and, and we'll be able to surpass that i believe you know if these kids continue to emerge continue to find nau as the best kept secret in the state of arizona and those are the things you're starting to see happen coach I want to talk a little bit briefly about your class then we'll get into spring ball which you start next week um great offensive line class three guys that really could have been fringe power five conference players you were able to scoop them up and keep them in state uh and chase Lorita, luke rudolph and stephen bailey and then also casey yon had a great career small school running back you could have Casey Yon 2.0 and Joe Logan coming over from Estrella Foothills coming down, another small school running back that could kind of pick up right where he left off. Uh, we're very fortunate to have found uh, Joe Logan. Uh, you know, I think our coaching staff did a great job recruiting him. Uh, yes, he came from a smaller school, but he is a dynamic running back. I mean, he's got speed, he's got power, he's got you know great change of direction, and uh, he's got the heart of a lion. And, and we're excited about what Joe brings to the table. And it's hard to get that guy say ten words in any setting. He's a lot like Casey that way. But you know, those kids that come out of the smaller school, I think, have a chip on their shoulder, something to prove. And and uh, for Casey, it worked out awesome. I mean, what a what a tremendous young man he was in our program. And we see Joe Logan in the same light. He's a very He's a fine young man. We're excited about him in our program. And finally, March 22nd, the big day to start spring football. What's on your agenda? What are you hoping to accomplish, to see? Every coach has a different perspective this time of year. Uh, what do you guys need to do to make sure you're best set up for the fall? I think in college football, when you look at year to year, you, know, you have a lot of guys return, and you'll have new guys that you blend, but every football team is different. You really, when, when January, February rolls around, you're into your off season. You're rebuilding the new team. So the 2016 team, you know, we'll carry some of the things that we remember were good for us last fall, but nothing in the last fall is going to help us or hurt us coming into this year. So we need to rebuild the, the chemistry again and, and redefine the things and the details that it takes that we believe to be a champion. And we've become so close in the last four years, each year playing for something at the end of the year. And I really believe the longer you knock on that door, you're going to get through that. And so uh, this is a significant step in our off season to continue to build uh, a strong you know, team chemistry and to improve fundamentally. Uh, you know, we didn't lose coaches, so we have a lot of continuity on the on the practice field, and and so we want to see ourselves get better in every aspect of our game, so we can take on the challenging season that opens with Arizona State, and uh, you know, and then it goes on from there. Coach, thank you so much. Really thank appreciate you, it. Thanks for having me.